gardens more powerful than presidents. Welcome back to Good News Next Week, everybody. I'm James Evan Pilato from MediaMonarchy.com with your weekly dose of ways that we are winning the solutions-oriented spinoff from New World Next Week. We've got that story plus turning off Big Brother, but first, a story submitted to us on Twitter at Mary Callie. Another success? Nestle abandons their Eldred Springwater project in Pennsylvania. And it was essentially done by community activism. People got together, spread the word, banded together, and won. Last Wednesday night, the residents' nearly year-long fight culminated in victory when Nestle withdrew a zoning permit application for the Chestnut Springs Water Extraction Facility in Eldred, Pennsylvania. The now dried-up project in Monroe County is the second loss for Nestle in a month. On May 17th, an Oregon community where the company wanted to open a plant voted to ban large-scale industrial bottling. It comes at an interesting time for the company as it and others search for new springs as the demand for bottled water continues to grow. I'm curious about that site and source, and we'll have to look into that. And yes, we were touting the win a couple of weeks ago here in Oregon. I think there is a battle still raging somewhere down in Arizona, and it's tough because they've got the money and they're the well-heeled ones that can keep the lawyer attacks going. But if you can keep angry moms going... There's not a lot, actually, that can stop that. Our second story and cover story this week on Good News Next Week comes from our buddy James Corbett at Corbett Report. Gardening more meaningful than voting in a rigged political system. This article on Activist Post is a great one by Alex Petrowski, and it gets into the ideas. The most efficient and effective change makers in our society aren't waiting around for a new president to make their lives better. They're planting seeds quite literally, and through the revolutionary act of gardening, they're rebuilding their communities while growing their own independence. And I know you guys have seen this all around. Every four years when the big election show comes around, millions of people put their passion for creating something better into an increasingly corrupt and absurd political wrestling contest. What if that energy was invested into something worthwhile, something that directly and immediately improved life, community, and the world at large? The simple act of growing our own food directly challenges the matrix in many authentic ways. This is why a lot of the most forward-thinking and strongest will people are picking up shovels and defiantly starting gardens. It's become a much more meaningful political statement than supporting political parties and candidates. And again, James had shared some photos of his garden successes. Our buddy Brock West has shared a lot of photos over the weeks and months of his community garden success. We're doing well with our beans and tomatoes going out on our apartment balcony gardens as well, and I can share some photos of those pretty soon. How are your community gardens going? How's your balcony garden going? How are you removing your consent? Because that's what it's all about. Finally, a story submitted to us at Miles of Truth. Street cameras turned off by hard-up council chiefs. We go to the UK with a story from the Times. Councils across the country are switching off their closed-circuit television cameras, saying they're too costly and ineffective at preventing crime. Westminster Council will discuss next week a plan to turn off 75 cameras it runs to save a million pounds a year. The council argued that it would need to spend a million seven pounds to update the system on top of running costs, which was unaffordable given spending cutbacks. Other metropolitan councils, including Birmingham, Edinburgh, Leicester, have already reduced their cameras significantly because of austerity measures. Others have switched off completely. Now, a lot of times they put these cameras up. They say it's for our protection when something actually goes down and we want to see the footage. They say, oh, they were broken. There's no footage. They never served us in the first place. They've been proven to not prohibit crime. And the UK is one of the most surveilled places in the world. You've probably seen the iconic photo of the surveillance camera outside of the former home of George Orwell. Some of the other stories we are looking at and submitted thanks to you using hashtag good news next week. Signed into law, Ohio legalizes medical marijuana, and that even sets about perhaps nullifying the federal move because the states have the power. John Kasich can do all right when he's not running for the phony baloney presidential selection. He signed a bill legalizing medical marijuana in Ohio past Wednesday, and it was House Bill 523. It sets in motion the creation of a limited medical marijuana program in Ohio, and that is the fantastic start. Hanger One makes vodka from San Francisco fog, and the article from Tree Hugger, of course, doesn't miss the opportunity to say that this would be like something hipsters in Portlandia would do. But basically, over six months, 
a distillery worked with a nonprofit called Fog Quest to harvest fog at four iconic San Francisco locations, eventually harvesting enough water for 2,400 bottles. A story by our buddy in the Netherlands, Joel Van Doren. Demonstrators form human chain near U.S. base in Germany. That's a much better use of hands not across America, but across Germany. Peace activists form a human chain on the streets leading toward the U.S. air base during the Stop Rammstein campaign in Rammstein, Germany on Saturday, June 11th. Demonstrators formed a human chain near the U.S. air base in western Germany to protest against lethal drone strikes. Protesters contend that the Ramstein Air Base is used to relay flight control data for lethal drone strikes. They are calling for the base, a major U.S. military hub, eventually to be closed altogether. Our last story at Eric Moshe. Man connects family with hundreds of World War II love letters to say nothing about the horrors and lies of war. If this were your family and this family in Kansas were basically reunited with a bunch of old family letters and things written by their deceased relatives. So... You would want that, I would want that for my records, to say nothing about the horrors of war, as war is a racket, and I know you know that, and that's why we don't want to go down the rabbit hole forever, we want to learn our way forward, and remove our consent, and do all those ways that don't have us raging against the machine for no reason. We're building our own thing. I hope there's some good news going down in your community, and I know there is. You can share it via Twitter using hashtag good news next week. And if you avoid the social nets as well, you probably should. You can always email me, james at mediamonarchy.com. We are listener-supported media since 2005, and we can only do it without with your support. If you go to mediamonarchy.com slash support, PayPal, Patreon, Bitcoin, a post office box, if you can give a little, we can give a lot. This has been Good News Next Week. I'm James Evan Pilato for MediaMonarchy.com, reminding you, as always, don't hate the media, become the media. Take care. <laughs> <laughs>